But uh, uh, Bert and Kelso, uh, there, I guess there's nothing much more to say, huh? No. So uh, we did the introduction uh, yesterday. He's, uh, he's uh, Mr. Tech Extraordinaire, uh, Cybersecurity, and uh, he is going to give you how to keep your business safe, online business safe from hackers. So ladies and gentlemen, Bert and Kelso. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad you have the glasses today. Those are nice. Well, thank you. Super. I try to be spotless. Am I in? You in the style of it. All right, good. All right, good morning, everyone. Again, I'm Brogan Kelso, technology expert. And today we're talking about how to keep your real estate business or your speaking business safe while you're on the road. Great thing to be on the road, right? Traveling, you're in exotic places or maybe not so exotic places. But one of the challenges is, is when you're on the road, Cyber criminals know that you're a little bit more, more vulnerable. Whether you're working at home or working with a brokerage, there are a lot of things that can happen to your tech devices. Now, before I go any further, I have to set the myth um, about current cybersecurity. Cybersecurity in its current stage is a human problem. That means hackers are no longer trying to actively get into your tech devices. Everyone, I should say everyone, but a lot of people think that criminals can actually get into your tech devices. You hear people using terms such as, my device is hacked, criminals got into my internet, and that simply is not the case. Every, te every tech device that you own is 99% safe from any cyber crime out there. So it doesn't matter if you're a Windows user, a Macintosh user, it doesn't matter if you're using an iPhone, iPad, or even an Android tablet, your devices have the protection to keep you safe from criminal activity. Does that make you feel a little bit more secure? So that means realistically, you can hop onto the hotel Wi-Fi, which I'm sure a lot of people have. How many people went ahead and hopped on the hotel Wi-Fi? Everyone's saying no, because you've been told that you can't do that because you're gonna get hacked, correct? Yeah, I'll answer for you. Yes, that's why you probably haven't done it, because criminals are going to get into your device. Is that the same as Starbucks? We're safe? Yeah, I mean, it's safe at Starbucks. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, the things that you need to do with Starbucks. But the challenge in today's society with cybercrime is that criminals are targeting you with socially engineered attacks. That's why you've got the two people on puppet strings. Now, if you haven't heard the term socially engineered, this is the act where criminals try to trick you into giving out your important information as opposed to hacking into your devices. And there's many forms of social engineering attacks that put you in a position where you're voluntarily giving up your personal information. Social engineering attacks usually come in the form of phishing email, but the whole idea around social engineering is to make sure that it's coming from authoritarian source. I forgot to hit my timer on the field. There we go. It looks like it's coming from someone of authority or a friend or a family member, and thereby you get out your personal information. So here's the statistic as far as cybercrime. All of them, all the attacks, or 99% of them, require some form of user interaction. That means if you don't click on a link, then basically you're gonna stay safe from most of the threats out there. So keep that in mind. And I hate to tell you, if you have suffered a safe cyber breach in the past five or six years, chances are you were at fault. So I want you to remember that. But at the same time, I don't want you to feel bad about that because when it comes to cyber criminals, you have to understand that it's no longer kids in the basement that are just fooling around like that 1980s movie War Games. Remember that with Matthew Broderick? Yeah. Maybe some of you weren't even alive when they came. I'm just dating myself. But cyber criminals are terrorists. They've got to make money, correct? Same thing with state-sponsored terrorists. That means countries like China, maybe even North Korea, Russia, are feeding money and information to criminals so they're able to attack us and get our information. So everyone's at risk, but at the same time, it's not that you're gonna be walking around with your device and the criminal's just gonna automatically be able to log in to it. So I like to make my presentations fun. So 
So we're gonna play a game called Myth or Fact. I'm gonna throw up an image. Gotta lower this mic down. I'm like blasting everywhere. And turn it upside down. Is that better? We were gonna ask you to do that, but I I know I have a you were booming doing such voice. A good job. Well thanks, I have that's a booming better. voice. That's All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so myth or fact. Wichita, Kansas is the capital of the state of Kansas. Is that a myth or is that a fact? What? How do all of this know this? I see that. Something I felt. So the answer is Topeka, Kansas, because I heard someone mention that. So yeah, Wichita is not the capital, or yeah, not the state capital. It's actual Topeka, Kansas. So we have a ton of threats out there that you have to deal with, and they are. I always forget. So number one is phishing. Phishing schemes are the number one cyber threat that you are going to deal with. And phishing comes in multiple forms. You've got email phishing. You have text phishing, which is called smishing because of SMS text. And then finally, you have vishing, which is voice phishing scams, meaning that someone calls up and says something like, oh, there's a problem with your bank account. You need to give me some information. Sometimes it can be even worse if little Timmy's falling down the well and he needs some money because he's down in the well overseas and we need your information to get a crew or wrangle a crew to get him out of the well. And the idea behind phishing is social engineers, meaning that criminals want your personal information, such as passwords, email addresses, maybe your home address, even your social security number. That is the whole purpose of phishing, and if you are going to suffer a data breach, it's going to be you giving out your information to cyber criminals who are looking for it. Again, it's not gonna be someone hacking into your device, unless you allow them in. So for example, my wife's uncle Ray fell for a cyber scam over the holiday season, and I'm really upset about it because Uncle Ray showed up for Thanksgiving with his laptop in tow and his desktop in tow. And the only reason Uncle Ray showed up to Thanksgiving dinner is because he knew yours truly was showing up as well so that I could fix his tech devices. So I hate to admit this, but you just cannot leave the room. I play stupid around my relatives when it comes to my tech abilities. So good thing Uncle Ray's problem was minor because if it had been anything complex, I'd have played stupid and said, I'm not afraid of it. So he goes home after me working on his devices. He falls for a scam because a pop-up alert appeared on his computer. He said, hey, there's a problem with Windows Defender. You need to call this number and we're gonna fix the issue. Ray calls and he fell into the scam for about $300 when he finally decided to call me. And he's, what do I do? And I said, Ray, just hang up the phone. There's nothing wrong with your computer. I just checked it. Well, obviously, Ray doesn't have confidence in my computer abilities because he ended up giving $3,500 to the cyber criminals. I know. So I told my wife, my rates for fixing your family's computer has gone up. If your family wants to utilize my services, it's going to be about $3,500. Because the dynamic that we have in our family is that my side of the family, when they need tech help, they're shelling out money. My wife's side of the family, oh, why you're here. <laughs> so yeah, $3,500 is what Ray got into. Now, one of the bigger threats that you would fall victim to is ransomware. And I'm sure in this day and age, everyone knows what ransomware is. There's two types, though. Type one is what Ray fell for, which is, hey, you can't get past this error message until you call this number and we fix your device. With that type of ransomware, it's just a simple matter of restarting your computer and the ransomware message goes away. Now, if you get the malicious kind, ransomware will not only lock up your computer, well, it won't necessarily lock up your computer. You get a ransom message that says, hey, your files are encrypted and you need to pay in Bitcoin or you need to pay us some, uh, some type of monetary. I see someone pointing at themselves. What's up? Did you fall for ransomware? Well, I didn't fall for it, but I opened my computer and that's exactly what it said. 
So what did you do? So the, the discussion is, is I opened my computer and this message popped up. So what did you do? I bought a new computer. Why would you buy a new computer? <laughs> because I need my computer to work and all my files. I couldn't get to any of my, my items. Oh, you mean your files were locked up, locked up, were you? Okay, so this is the most malicious form yeah. of ransomware. <laughs> Right. So with real, with real solid ransomware, your files are encrypted or locked up. And that means that you are not able to access your files anymore. Now, if you pay the ransom, you may be able to get your files back, but it's not recommended that you never pay the ransom. So there's methods to prevent this from happening, obviously. So, yes, ma'am. I would say yes. I'm going to talk about it, so I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that question. <laughs> but the answer is yes, and I'll explain why in a minute why Carbonite and other backup programs are important. Now, facial recognition and AI is a huge problem. Anyone ever seen a deep fake video on YouTube? I love them because there's certain movies that I'm like, such and such actor should be in this movie. Like, I mean, you're a Star Wars fan. Those last three movies, in my mind, don't count as some form of fan fiction that some idiot made. But there was a Han Solo movie that came out a few years back, and someone did a deep fake where they put Harrison Ford's face, a young Harrison Ford's face, over the actor that did it. In fact, there's a new Indiana Jones movie coming out, and it's young Harrison Ford that they deep faked or did AI in order to make it look like young Indy is doing baddies with the Nazis as opposed to 80-year-old Harrison Ford, who is playing Indiana Jones. Now, deepfakes and AI are a problem because they can't necessarily imitate humans, but they can fake people enough because we all scroll and we click on stuff, and we don't pay attention to the information that comes into our devices. So with an AI deepfake, especially if you're an educator or a real estate agent, you are a prominent person in our society matter if you're a broker, whatever, you have a promising, trusting face that criminals can take and manipulate and send out messages. So if someone, and it's going to emerge more, so if someone wanted to trick buyer or seller or anyone else with you, they can definitely create either text using chat GPT or some of the other tools out there, or they can scan your face from your beautiful real estate photo, because I know everyone's got one and they can superimpose it on another person or another actor's face and then make it look like the message is coming from you. So one of the things I would recommend that you would do for alerts like that to keep track of it is to set up Google Alerts for yourself. So how many people are using Google Alerts to kind of keep track of what's going on? Only one per two people, three, four, you need to, five. You need to set up Google Alerts so that you can be informed that whenever someone is posting some, something on the internet about you. So that way you can shut it down. Does that work with just photo recognition? Or Anytime your name is mentioned with Google Alerts, <coughs> it will pop up and send you a message. Awesome. Now the good thing about Google Alerts is that you can set it up for daily alerts, weekly alerts, monthly alerts. And it just comes in your inbox and it keeps you nice and safe. Bless you. No problem. Social media is a problem, correct? Oh, we've got a question, yeah. So, I mean, I use Google Alerts, but it won't notify me of like social postings and stuff. Like that. Google is scary. If your name shows up anywhere on the internet, you will get an alert about it. Oh, nice. It never does for me, but they could use our picture now. They could use your picture, but in order to gain that trust, what's the point of using your photo without mentioning you? Because the idea around Phishing attacks is to gain, get someone that they can gain the comp or get you gain the confidence of whatever user or whoever they're trying to trick. And then that's why you would have to be included with the alert. We had a question, yes. So I to teach in my classes for Google Alerts when they have a vacant listing to protect them from the scams that are going on with vacant listings for rent. There's a problem if you have a vacant listing that's often just That's what I do. Like I teach address. Yeah, I just tell them to put a Google alert for that address 
That's all right. So the discussion that's going on is if you basically if you are a real estate professional, you need to set up Google alerts because it would protect you from fraud from any source, even social media. Now with social media, we've all seen I've been hacked, right? People, oh, I've been hacked, I've been hacked, I've been hacked. Well, let me get to that. There's two types of cybercrime that occur with social media accounts. Number one, you've got the duplicated account. It's even happened to me. And I, unfortunately, my, it's like I've got a lot of dead people, right? Because I'm about to say my dearly deceased cousin, Rocky, alerted me to a Google alert or a, a duplicate Facebook account. And so then I was able to shut it down. Now, duplicate accounts work because the criminals research you, they block you when they create the fake account, so you probably will never e even see the duplicate account. Now, if someone writes you and says, hey, I got some goofy message from you, then you need to have the person that found the fake account report it to the social media authorities, and then it will be taken down. There's no need to change passwords, there's no need to worry, it's just, again, a phishing scheme that is trying to lure people to trusting your account so that they can see you spam. Yes, ma'am. It depends because it will, but if you've got your Google Alerts set up like for weekly, it could be a week and then you've got this account that's sending out malicious information. So that's the challenge that you have to work with with social media. Now, oh yes. Do you know how many times you would need someone to report the account before it gets taken down? I don't know, a lot. Because years ago, actually during the pandemic, someone actually set up a Burton Kelso sucks Facebook group. <laughs> It gets even better. Someone took my photo, and then, I don't know why it is when people hate you, they put double horns on you. <laughs> I had a goatee, and then someone blackened one of my teeth. And that kind of seems the norm when people hate you, they blacken your teeth and put double horns on you. But it took a lot, and I think the page is still up, but it's kind of like in the background now. Okay. But there were a ton of people that were reporting it, so it may take a couple of days may take a week, but I know it's not instantaneous. Gotcha. Now with fake social media accounts, or not fake, but with hacked social media accounts, this is what happens. You try to log into your social media account and you can't get access to it anymore. You do the password reset, it doesn't come to you, so that means your account is gone. And I'm gonna tell you, if that ever happens, there's nothing on God's green earth that will get you your account back, nothing. So if you value your social media accounts, you better set up a strong password and make sure that the account's secure because if you lose it, it's a done deal. Now let's breeze through these real quick so we can get to the meat of it. There's a thing called drive-by hacking. That's why you got the gangsters up there because they're kind of doing a uh, cyber drive-by. But drive-by hacking works when criminals actually set up fake websites. You visit the website and then you click on a link on the website and it automatically infects your devices. That's drive-by hacking. You really have to uh, watch out where you go on the internet, what websites you're visiting. There's password usage. People are always using weak passwords, and we'll talk about how to prevent that. Also, there is malicious software that's still floating around on the internet. You have programs that promise to scan your Windows or Mac and Tosh computer for viruses, and they're bogus. You go to websites, they install plugins by visiting the website, and that's just malicious software. Something else you need to be concerned or concerned about is credential stuffing. A few years ago, there was a lady complaining about ring doorbell had been hacked. And everyone's all up and, oh my gosh, I'm not getting a ring device. You know, someone hacked it. Well, it wasn't ring that was the issue. It was because the lady in question had her information on the dark web, criminals found it, logged into her ring doorbell, camera system and her interior cameras and started to harass the kids. It was, I, I hate to say this and I have a sick sense of humor, but it was funny because the kids ran out of the room because they're like, oh yeah, you're bad, blah, blah, blah. And then the kids ran in the other room and they're like, you can't run from us, we see you. It was a pretty big situation. I hate to laugh at it because it was some little kids, but it was not Ring's fault. It was because the leaked password. So they got it changed. So one of the things I want to stress real quick is making sure that you have the right technology to help protect yourselves on the road. So first thing, doesn't matter what, well, there's two brands of devices that I recommend that you get as far as your, what you're going to have laptop-wise, desktop, whatever. So in my opinion, the best 
two computers on the market are either Dell or Apple. In my mind, there's don't jack with HP, don't mess with the Dell. What are the other brands? Craig, help me out. What brand of computer am I missing? Samsung. Yeah. Lenovo. Yeah, none of those. Acer. Dell and Apple. Acer. I'll tell you my reason for Dell. Now, Apple, if you have a problem within the warranty period, you got to take it back to the Apple Store, mail it off. But Dell, if you get their extended warranty, if you have a problem with your device, they'll send a technician to you wherever you are in the world. We've had customers, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm in Indiana. Call Dell, they'll send someone out. I had a customer, bought a Dell. Hard drive went out, turned one out of his property. Call Dell. Guy lived in western Missouri, which is like a rural area north of the Kansas City area where I live. Sent Dell out. Dell sent, came out, replaced his stuff, questions asked. Especially this is important if you're a mobile laptop user. Imagine if you were on the road at a conference, your laptop craps out. What are you going to do? It's under warranty. You know, I carry two just in case one craps out. But let's say you're the solo and you like risking it. Laptop goes out, call down. They'll send someone here to fix it. Usually, say, not the same day, next day or a day after. So keep that in mind. Internet is important because a lot of us are doing virtual stuff. Want to check your internet speed? Visit a website called speedtest.net. Speed you want to get as far as upload and download speeds are at least 50 megabits per second or higher. And that ensures that you're going to have a good, strong video connection. So if you are having issues at home with your internet, go to speedtest.net and check it out. Now another site you can check out if your internet's crappy and you want to know if there's other providers in your area, go to highspeedinternet.com. It will give you a list of all the internet providers telling you if they're uh, satellite, telling you if they're land-based, and telling you what speed you can expect to get when you're using the internet. And you probably didn't know this about your home internet route. Now, I know Craig is of the mindset, uh, let's go out and get your own route. Right? Do you remember our discussion? So my thing is, if you're just an average Joe and you don't know anything about the internet, and you're paying or leasing for your router, you need to switch it out at least every five years because routers are working 24 seven in your home and they just start getting raggedy. And if, raggedy. And if you're in the process of having to unplug and plug in your router, that's a sign that it's going bad because with wireless routers and routers in homes, they work. And if you're having to unplug, plug in, it's time to replace that thing. So keep that in mind. You should have a mic in here. Where's the box? <laughs> what did you just say so everyone can hear? Well, like, like a lot of times, it's like the modem you get, right? You get from Comcast, whatever you're using. Those modems are garbage places, and a lot of times they throttle. Like you can't get true speeds. Right. 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 Other thing to support what Craig is saying is that a lot of times the routers that you get from your internet provider are refurbished, yeah. Yeah. and you have to specifically request, "I want a new router." And it's like, they're, and when you tell that to the person at the cable store, they almost have that Scooby-Doo look yeah. of the criminal. <laughs> Darn it, you know? And I almost got away with it if it hadn't been for those meddling kids. That's how they act. They look dejected. Other things you want to consider too, use cloud-based applications like Google Workspace and Office 365, just for the simple fact of making sure that your devices are stored somewhere up in the cloud. Because I know none of you probably back up your devices at all, or your doctor. It just admit it. It's okay. It happens. So keep that in mind. What did you say, Heather? I don't know. Does it, Heather? <laughs> I don't know. You should find that out for yourselves. But the answer, so the question was, is doesn't it do that automatically? It depends how you have it set up. But it is supposed to do it. So it's your responsibility to find out. And I can help you out, Heather. If you need so yes, ma'am. Yes, because under most circumstances, well, I should say in all circumstances, Google Workspace is cloud-based, meaning that there's no application installed on your computer. So you, you're essentially working in the cloud, and it's supposed to automatically back up your files when you're working in Google Workspace. But, and it does. So that's why I recommend that you would use either Office 365 or Google Workspace, because that information is always being backed up. Was that your question? Okay. 
Moving on, last thing you might want to consider is getting a cloud printer. Any wireless printer usually has an email address. So if you're on the road, you need to print out some documents, you can email it, it'll be sitting at home waiting on you to get, you know, your documents are waiting on you. Now let's talk about getting cyber secure. But before we do that, let's talk about myth of fact. So myth of fact, you get ransomware. You pay the ransom to get your stuff back, right? Not, does someone say not necessarily? So the answer is, is you never pay the ransom under any circumstances because it will make you a target again. Let me finish the story about Uncle Ray. Thought I was done with that, right? There is wait, but wait, there is more. So a few weeks after Ray got scammed for thirty-five hundred dollars, the criminals called back. Ray, we're sorry. We're going to get this right. All we need. And if we don't get it right, we're going to refund your money. But in order to make that happen, we need your routing number and your banking account number to refund your money. So because Ray paid the ransom initially, especially to the tune of $3,500, which nearly broke them from what I understand, they wanted more money. So if you pay the ransom, it makes you a larger target to criminals. So you never pay it. If you lose your phone, I'm sorry, you lost your phone. Now, one of the tools that you want to do to protect yourself is go to a website called HaveIBeenOwned.com. Exactly, spelled exactly like this. And I encourage you right now to visit that website to see how many times your information has been leaked onto the dark web. Now, the way Have I Been Owned works is that if you put your email address or your phone number into this website, it will scan and see how many times your phone number or email address has been involved in a large-scale data breach. Because one of the things that I failed to mention as far as data breaches are concerned, companies that you work with will get hacked. Sometimes if you work with like an Amazon or a larger company, they sell or not sell, but they allow a smaller company to manage your data. And like most small companies, sometimes they'll get breached. But if a company gets breached, do you think they're going to be forthcoming about being breached? No. They want to make their shareholders happy. And so your information can be floating on the web, and criminals could be using that information in order to get access to your personal information. So, yes, you had a question? I think the biggest one is TransUnion was breached because the password for the server was, can you take a guess? Password. Password. That's serious. That's serious. 23? Yeah. Oh, it's in that been six breaches in three cases. Oh, in one case. Craig, what does pace mean? I mean, no, what is the whole I'll tell you the first part. The first part means that your information has been leaked out by 23 companies that you have worked with. Yes. At this point, is it too late to do anything about that? No. You, what you need to do is to change your passwords for any account that was for that account that you work with. So for example, for me, LinkedIn was one of the accounts that my information was leaked out in the data breach. So all I had to do was go in and change my LinkedIn password. Same thing with uh, Matt my fitness. And you know, obviously back in 2012, I wasn't using Matt my fitness if you saw my keynote. You know, it was a little chunky back then. But anyway, you need to change your password for that account. Now here's the kicker. No one asked me about their phone number or have you entered your phone number to see how many times you've been phoned? Zero. Zero, well good. But the challenge is, as real estate professionals, you have to stop that practice of giving out your cell phone number to criminals. For safety reasons too. Right, and I think I have another slide about that, but, and I'll explain it if I forget, I'll remember it and I'll tell you. So anyway, yes. I mean, cyber criminals can take your phone number and use it and steal it. Yeah, that's why you don't give out your, your mobile number as a real estate professional. Never. You've got to use something like Google Voice, or you can use WhatsApp as your public number. But your mobile number in today's day and age should only be shared with your close family and friends. And I'll tell you why. No one cares about giving out your phone number. No one really cares. They're just giving out. Oh, if you want to get a hold of Burton, here, here's his number. I stopped giving out my mobile number. 
because when I did, I started getting, and I don't get that many, but I started getting the spam calls. Because people just share it. And as real estate professionals, you've got to protect that. Because if you suffer what's called SIM card fraud, criminals can steal your account and use it as their own, and then start making spam calls to other people. And it ruins your reputation as a real estate agent. And I think many of you, even as educators, have to be concerned about your rep. Can you imagine if you worked with a real estate board and then all of a sudden they started getting spam calls with your caller ID and number on it? How's that gonna ruin, I mean, how's that gonna affect your reputation? It's gonna have a negative effect. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So once we find this out, so you just need to change the password and that's it? Well, for your email addresses, you can change the password to ensure that criminals don't have your user um, your user ID and then your password because the way cyber criminals work with user ID and passwords for social media and other financial sites is that they get on the dark web. They kind of monitor you, find out what you do. Find your username and password on the dark web. They'll start small. Like, funny story, I was about to go live on the news one time and I got an alert from the PlayStation account that I was logging in from Dearborn, Michigan. And just one more thing, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. So the discussion is, is there's a code that you get with your carrier that if you get spam calls, that it'll go to voicemail if it's from an unrecognized number. But still, I'm gonna say, don't share your mobile number. That's the best way. So moving on, let's talk about, oh yes, one last question. One, one other question, sorry, and you haven't talked about it yet, so I don't know if it's on your agenda. It might be, but I'll go to it. I think you took one of my mental fact cookies. questions. <laughs> so the question is, is what about cookies? Cookies are, yes, like Michelle just said, they're good with milk. <laughs> but on an actual device, they're not they can be malicious. Meaning that they're there to steal the information of the websites you visited. And usually cookies are used to get a profile of where you've been on the web. And that way advertisers can kind of see what things you love and like. And they show up, especially on Facebook. You're looking for furniture, all of a sudden you get furniture ads on Facebook. Um, so you, the best method to keep yourself safe from cookies is to surf the internet, what's called in private mode or incognito mode. And that will at least allow your cookies not to be shared with specific websites. You can also use a VPN to help keep safe from having that. But you're gonna lie. I accept them and then I enable them because I really don't care. I don't shop much online and I don't care, so look at my cookies. Now let's talk about password management. So you know LastPass was hacked the last year, right? It's a popular password manager. So it used to be at the top of the list of managers to use to keep your passwords in one place. Not anymore. My suggestion, use your browser settings to store your more popular passwords because most web browsers, it doesn't matter if you use Safari, if you use Chrome, Edge, I'm not forgetting any, Brave, Firefox, and I will say that it's probably not the most secure, but it's better to use a password keeper to keep those difficult passwords because all of them have the ability to alert you if for some reason your passwords are leaked out onto the dark web. Now, if you see that message pop up, obviously that means you need to change the password for that account because Chris, the cybersecurity guy, or the cybersecurity criminal has your information. So use something. Use your browser, use OnePass, use, I think NordVPN or Nord has a password keeper, but any except LastPass because they were free. And also it's important to set up two-factor, two-step authentication with your online accounts. If you are working with a web-based tool that doesn't have two-factor or two-step authentication, which is the process 
uh, when you log into a, an account, then it'll alert you and say, hey, is this you in Addis Ababa, uh, Saudi Arabia, trying to log into your Facebook account? Same thing with the Sony PlayStation thing with, hey, are you in Dearborn, Michigan? But no, I'm in Lee Summit, Missouri, about to go live on uh, News Nation now, you know? So two-factor helps protect if you get lax with your passwords and you need to set it up on your accounts. And speaking of passwords, let's start using past phrases instead. Past phrases are two unrelated words that make up a password. Now, when you normally set up your passwords for your online accounts, you're probably using things like Spanky the dog, and then maybe some numbers, your dear Uncle Jim, your kids, city you grew up in, maybe with your address. All things that are probably floating around on the dark web. So with passphrases, you can get creative and make up, and don't ever use this, because I've used this passphrase all over the country, stinky chicken, 1229 exclamation point. There's nothing associated with me with stinky or chicken, so some cyber criminal is not going to be able to put that together. Other passphrases you can use are hollow hippopotamus, 2059 exclamation point. You can use another one, striped Mercedes. But you get the idea as far as using passphrases as opposed to passwords. Keep that in mind. Now let's talk about the question of using Wi-Fi when you're traveling. <laughs> Someone asked me about, are you connected to the hotel Wi-Fi? Heck yeah, because I verified that it was the Wi-Fi that the hotel is actually using. Same thing with Starbucks, you know? You verify that you're connecting to the right okay. Wi-Fi. You can do that in a pinch. I won't say it's completely okay, because in some instances you probably should use a VPN when you're connecting to Wi-Fi. But the main thing is verification. If you're hurry, you want to go and look at some non-financial account, like if you're just peeking at social media, by all means. But if you are using sensitive data, you probably should use either a VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network, and one of my favorite ones as far as VPN is Tunnel Bear, because when I present, I love doing the motions of Tunnel and then Bear, you know. But it's actually Tunnel Bear, and it's available for every device. Or, if you're on the cheap side, the web browser Opera has a built-in web-based VPN that you can use to kind of keep your information safe and secure. But, yes? Hi, how are you? <laughs> the most secure way to be safe on the road is to use a mobile hotspot because you would have to break into, or a criminal would have to break in to your mobile carrier in order to access your personal information. Doesn't matter if you use a hotspot like this or one on your phone, but that is the ultimate protection. And the good thing about hotspots, and the reason I'm reluctant to throw the, the hotspot out is because I don't want to tell someone to use a hotspot and they don't have an unlimited data plan. But if you've got unlimited data, I don't want the bill. Someone, or you told me to use a hotspot and I've got this $200 bill because I didn't have mobile. So, um, with a hotspot, you definitely want to make sure that you have unlimited internet. And the good thing now with the emergence of 5G, it's gonna, the hotspot's gonna give you a faster internet connection than say the hotel Wi-Fi or any other public place that you connect to. So keep that in mind. Let's talk about free email. Craig, how do you feel about this? Free email accounts? Free email accounts for real estate. You heard what he said, 99% of scams. Because free email accounts attract cyber criminals because there's numbers. And with any phishing scam, it's a numbers game. So although you may not click on those links that come in those phishing emails, you are gonna be more susceptible because at some point you're gonna get lazy and you're gonna click on something that's gonna get you scammed. So if you are with a brokerage, use that email. Realistically, if you're an educator, you need to have your own domain set up. And it's easy to do. GoDaddy, Wix, Squarespace, set one up. It will lessen the amount of spam that comes in because someone's gonna look at BurtonKelso.com and go, this guy's doing nothing. He ain't wasting my time either spamming this person. He's a nobody. Other things to be concerned with. How many of you have Alexa devices? Google Home devices? You know, devices are always listening to your conversations, right? 
Every word that you say, Alexa is picking it up and it's storing it on the web. Storing it on your Amazon account if you have an Alexa device and on your Google account if you have a Google Home device. What about Siri? Yes. Yeah, of course. Siri's listening. Yeah. Bad. Seriously. I know, bad, bad Siri. Bad Siri. Bad Siri. But the challenge with that is with your home, smart home devices is that you probably don't have a secure password set up for your Amazon or Google account. So criminals, that's one of the first things they look for is to those lesser known accounts that people aren't gonna change like social media, your Uber app, your, oh gosh, what's the other rights here? Lyft. Thank you, I never use Lyft. <laughs> they look for those smaller accounts to find out if they can get into those accounts and then they start to graduate. Of course your Amazon account is, and your Google account is gonna get hacked. So you need to make sure that with your smart home devices, either unplug them, get it out of your office, or you need to make sure that those accounts are secured with a password or a password, I'm asking. You better do it. I'll find you. Antivirus, pick the best one out of the list up there. Keep going, someone else. <laughs> so let's talk about antivirus. Do you know most antivirus com uh, companies around other country? Yeah. Someone said Avast, the Netherlands. Trend Micro, Japan. Kaspersky. Come on. Russia. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So you need to investigate where that antivirus company is based out of because privacy laws aren't the same overseas as they are in the U.S. So maybe that antivirus program is scanning your computer for viruses, but it also could be scanning your computer for important documents. Now the ones that are US based, but I hate with a passion, are Norton and McAfee. But we all know the story about John McAfee, right? Would you want to be using antivirus from a guy that's off the rails like that? I would, but you can't. But my suggestion, if you have a Windows-based computer, is that you use Windows Defender as your antivirus. It has been included in Windows since Windows 7, but it sucked back then. But when 10 came out, Microsoft got their A-game on as far as your antivirus is concerned. So Defender is probably one of the better tools that you can use to protect your computer. And if you have a Mac, it's a, uh, well, let's do Defender. There's a graphic for Defender. But if you have a Mac, it's got a, the whole operating system itself is antivirus software. So you're relatively safe running nothing on your Mac as long as you don't do what with your with your computer? Click on any bad link. How do you know? Oh, how do you know to see click? So we talked to, yes, correct. Okay, all right, let's, let's wrap it up. So what happens if you've been hacked? So number one, if you've been hacked, you need to make sure you alert the authorities and you need to let them know whatever um, situation you've been in because if um, you've been hacked, if you alert the authorities, then they will be able to let other people know that there's a scam going around. But never just suffer in silence, as they say. Make sure that you are keeping yourself protected and make sure that um, the authorities know so that way you can let everyone else know so that they don't get hacked. So let's do a myth or fact and then we'll wrap up. So myth or fact, I hate to admit it, I love this show. So myth or fact, Bridgerton takes place during the Gilded Age. Is that a myth or a fact? Gilded Age. Someone threw that out with authority. Wrong. Whatever, wrong. It's the Regency era. And most romance novels that take place between 1800 and 1850 take place in the Regency era. So real quickly, let's talk about automatic backups. Yes, if you set up your office account, right, and your Dropbox account, it will automatically back up your items. If you have a, a desktop computer, you can definitely use a external hard drive with Microsoft file history, or if you're a Mac user, you can use, oh gosh, Thank you, Craig, time machine. Now there's a difference between cloud backup and cloud storage. 
if you're using Microsoft OneDrive or iCloud or Dropbox, those are considered cloud storage, meaning that the only job that it's really supposed to do is allow you to access your files anywhere in the world. Now, with cloud backup services like, say, Carbonite, the whole goal is for you to have a backup system that has multiple copies of your backup, and they store your information all over the globe. So if you get hacked with Carbonite and get ransomware, then they can go to a previous backup and restore your data. So that's the difference. If, an instance with OneDrive, you get ransomware and then it goes up to the cloud, you maybe have like one copy of file that you can restore from. So in my opinion, Carbonite would be the best backup to go with. Uh, one last myth of fact. Myth of fact, you can yank out your flash drive without causing damage. Is that a myth or is that a fact? So the answer is, if you are copying information to your flash drive as you yank it out, it's going to ruin the data. But in other instances, you don't have to safely eject that flash drive because it's protected. I know, that's pretty awesome, right? All right, we're right at time, right, Craig? Yeah, I mean, lunch starts at 5. Oh, well, I, I don't want lunch. I don't think you want to eat lunch. Make them angry. I, I don't. So basically, to wrap things up, Every device that you have is protected. So as long as you are cognizant of what information that's coming into your inbox or what websites you're going to, you're going to be safe for most cyber threats out there. So stay vigilant. Make sure that you are paying attention to what comes into your box and make sure that you update your computers and devices on a regular basis to keep you uh, safe. So that's me, for the Council of Tech Experts. Follow me on social media or connect with me at the conference. So.